when we last left off with the trading game, we talked about living passionately. And so far this week, we've discussed the fact that life and trading in general, or specifically, really comes down to probabilities, not sure things. And then we talked about the fact that tying consequences to goals can overcome some of the problems the problems associated with living in a probabilistic world where nothing is necessarily for certain and you have to deliver something and overcome the probabilities stacked against you at certain times. That sometimes the only way to overcome those problems associated with probabilities is to have a consequence. And then yesterday we talked about the fact that not everything deserves a consequence and not everything deserves a goal in the first place. And sometimes you can live a happier life by structuring your day to include things that bring you true happiness and peace of mind, and not really worrying so much about the deliverable, about the appointments that you have or the things that you have to do. And I want to start off today by uh, mentioning that I, I did it that way yesterday. Usually I hate using the telephone. I'll avoid telephone calls. I'll leave my phone off or avoid phone calls. I just don't like answering the phone because once I'm on the phone, it's the only thing that I can do. And once I'm on the phone, I'm only talking to one person, and generally, I'd rather talk to a group of people, and that's just who I am. And yesterday, I just thought, well, no, I'm, I'm going to do things a little bit differently today, and I'm going to throw out some old behaviors and try something new. And I had a startlingly interesting phone call because I decided that I would go ahead and actually keep an appointment <laughs> instead of doing the usual and not keeping an appointment. And at the end of the presentation today, I'll share that experience with you. But I wonder what kinds of things occurred in your life yesterday if you chose yesterday to kind of live without regard to what you have to do or what is absolutely deliverable and you lived life according to what would bring you true happiness and peace of mind. It's on those types of days that some surprisingly good things happen. The trading game, part four, is the last segment in the process of discussing how we deal with an endeavor that is dependent upon probabilities and where consequences, although firm, are perhaps the only way that we can deal with those probabilities and that we should really just be doing things that bring us true happiness and peace of mind or else it doesn't really matter in the end that we were successful at delivering something or not because it didn't generate necessarily any feelings of peace or happiness and if you're seeking after those types of things you can make a living and you can also make sure that you're doing it in a way that brings you happiness and, and peace of mind. Today I want to talk about whether or not where you are now is connected to where you want to be going. We could talk about trading specifically and we could talk about any other aspect of your life. But that's the subject for today. My question to you is what is your trajectory? I got this image from Wikipedia and most of the other images that you see in the presentation today. And I'm asking you this question. Given the fact that you know that the world is probabilistic and given the fact that you know that you need to tie some consequences to deliverables that you're going to do by the end of the year, and given the fact that you know that it had better be something that you really want to do or else it's really probably not going to work out, I want to ask you right now in general, what's your trajectory? Given where you are now, where are you likely to end up? A trajectory is the path that a moving object follows through space as a function of time. This most certainly is not a physics lesson. I don't know anything about physics, and everything I know about trajectories I learned from Wikipedia, which means I may actually know nothing. However, the concept of trajectory, where you are now, is somehow related to where you're going. If you can determine your rate of speed and your mass the angle that you were launched at, and so forth. Trajectories are a concept or a principle that you can apply to trading and you can apply it to life. It's not just a principle that applies to ballistics and the television programs where they track down a criminal by following the bullet's path. My question to you is, given your current position and your direction and the speed at which you're moving, where are you going? 
Think about your teenagers for a moment if you have kids or your young children. Given their current position in life and the direction in which they're headed and the speed with which they are headed there, where are they going? Generally speaking, we become larger or more pronounced versions of ourselves over time, and our most defining characteristics tend to become enlarged or more obvious to the rest of the world over time. Even characteristics that we keep in private tend to come out with time. In other words, who we really are tends to become more obvious the older we get, the longer we live, and the further down the path that we go. Given your current position, where are you going is my question. Take a moment here and I'll show you this really cool slideshow from this current slide. Consider the paths of these three objects. Height relates to distance. Angle relates to distance. Possibly the speed at which they are moving relates to distance. Most of you know already that if you throw a ball high up in the air at a certain angle, as hard as you can throw it, the fact that you've thrown it up high in the air is going to make it land further out. It's a general concept. Everyone's familiar with it. But if you consider that these three objects aren't balls or bullets or other projectiles, and these are people, you can start to apply the concept of trajectory to get some bearings right now for where you are in your life and understand a little bit better what you need to do in order to adjust your course and start over. The terrible thing about a projectile or a bullet or an arrow or whatever is once you've released it, it cannot be called back and the trajectory cannot be changed. You cannot alter it. This isn't the matrix. Once you release it into the world, you cannot take it back. There are mistakes that we make with people or children that are very similar. Once you make a certain number of mistakes over a certain period of time in a relationship or with a child, you truly can't get that time back. And that child has a trajectory that is very difficult to alter as you go further out into time. Our lives and our personal interactions with individuals, however, follow something different. We generally always have a personal choice. If you aren't now where you would like to be, you typically have a choice about changing your trajectory. In fact, you can go back to the beginning and start all over in many cases with relationships or jobs. And although those experiences require an enormous amount of courage and a bit of luck and the resources to start over, it is possible in life to start relationships over, to start employment over, to change career paths, to get some help and medication to change the way that you deal with people, and so forth. Addictions aren't permanent. Bad relationships aren't permanent. Terrible jobs or whatever are not permanent. Failures from the past aren't permanent. And the wonderful thing about being a human with a prefrontal cortex is that you know the difference between choices and consequences, and that every choice you make carries a consequence. And if you don't like the consequence that you are receiving, you always have a choice to change what you are doing, to follow a different set of probabilities, and to get a different deliverable. It's generally up to you. So once you've looked at that image of a trajectory, a projectile moving out in time, and compared it to yourself. Given your current position and your direction and speed, where are you going? You don't necessarily want to be the one going furthest out, and you don't necessarily not want to be the one going shortest in. Sometimes our goals are closer than we imagine. Sometimes people tell me with respect to trading, I really don't know yet what I'm supposed to be doing. And the real truth of the matter is, they know what they should be doing, they just aren't really quite ready to do it yet. Sometimes things that we find difficult are really much easier than we at first imagined and don't require as much effort as we first imagined. They sometimes require less effort. With respect to trading, if you have a bad week and you simply shut off the computer and relax your mind, 
you can actually end up improving your overall performance over time by simply taking the bullets out of the gun and reloading next week. This week I'm down, I think, 79 pips, and I'm done for the week. I'm not going to take another trade. It's no big deal, and it doesn't really matter. It's not important to me to try to find some magical way to end the week profitable, and I'm simply done for the week, and I know that next week will be better, and the next week after that, and over time, things are going to be just fine. But for right now, the best thing I can do is land at the shortest distance and just simply get ready for next week not make giant changes or alterations or rethink everything or make extraordinary adjustments, but to simply just get back on track next week. Here's another way of looking at it. I have a web link here inside the slide presentation, and we're going to visit the worldwide interweb right now. This is a website run by a guy who refers to himself, or a girl, as a rabid geek. It's a projectile motion calculator. And what I can do here is click on drag factor and put more drag on it, and I can click on launch angle, initial velocity, projectile mass, and gravity. We'll give it no gravity. And then I can animate it. That's pretty fun, isn't it? You can see here that this projectile motion calculator includes a drag factor, launch angle, initial velocity, projectile mass, and gravity. This works for ballistics and for projectiles. It also works for people and goals. Mass and speed, angle, gravity, drag, and wind all have an effect on projectiles, and there is an a corresponding concept that applies in the setting of deliverables and the dealing with probabilities. For example, mass. If you shove a giant rock into the air, something that weighs 200 pounds, its trajectory isn't going to be very impressive. If you throw a aerodynamic ball into the air, you're going to get something different. Let me ask you, how heavy are you? Not physically and not your weight, but how set are you in your ways? How set in your ways have you become over time as life has taught you that certain things are possible and certain things are not possible? What's your mass right now? What's your goal-oriented or your deliverable-oriented mass? Are you dragging yourself down with excess something? belief systems, people who rail against you. How heavy are you in a certain area? Speed. What's the rate at which you're going to pursue change? That's going to make a difference. If you choose a quicker rate of speed, some things happen. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say that I set an example to lose 10 pounds and feel 20% healthier than I do right now within 30 days. And that's my deliverable. Well, there are certain probabilities associated with that deliverable, and I'm more likely to overcome the probability that I will continue to eat as I have eaten and avoid exercise as I have avoided exercise. There's a higher probability associated with that unless I tie a consequence to it. So let's say that I, in addition, tie a consequence to it and say that if I am able to achieve my goal, I will receive X, Y, or Z, maybe a lease to a new car or maybe just a trip to Legoland with my son or something like that. And let's say that if I don't achieve that, then I'm going to take something away. I'm going to automatically increase the probability that I will be able to accomplish that goal. However, if I then start off on the first day and say, I'm only going to eat 11 donuts instead of 12, I'm not launching into my change at a very high rate of speed. And that's my question. At what rate of speed am I going to pursue change? Will it be radical? Will it be dramatic? Will I change my life now, or will I gradually ease into change? It's a question. I'm not giving you the answer. I'm just proposing that the speed at which you pursue change will affect 
your trajectory, and your trajectory affects where you land. Angle. How high are you aiming from the start? Now watch out for that, right? Just because you aim extraordinarily high doesn't mean that that's so great. For example, in the diagram that you can see on the screen in front of you right now, you can see that a steep angle at the very beginning isn't necessarily better. You can actually find a nice, easy angle, a 45-degree angle or a 30-degree angle, that can be more successful in accomplishing a greater distance than a sharp angle, like a 60-degree angle, or a really, really uh, shallow angle, like a 15-degree angle. The angle at which you start makes a difference. How high are you aiming from the start? Let me give you an example with respect to weight. Let's say I had that goal to lose 10 pounds and feel 20% healthier within 30 days. If I aim to achieve the entire 10 pounds at the very start, it is very likely that I'm going to end up doing less of what I intended by the completion of the entire trajectory. And you can see that speed and angle are competing considerations. Speed will affect things, how fast I get started, and how high I'm aiming from the start affects things as well. Gravity. What's the mass of the Earth under your feet? There's another way of saying, what's your mass? Your mass compared with the mass of the Earth under your feet. For example, if you are buried in cubicle number 7,365 inside of Insurance Corporation Incorporated, it's likely that you've got a huge degree of mass underneath your feet, and that mass is going to be holding you down. If you've recently lost your job and you're a free agent, then you're like a moonwalker. You can jump up in the air and nothing's really keeping you down. Do you own your home? Are you, not, are you mobile? Do you have low expenses? Are you able to go by in life without a lot of money? That's your gravitational pull. With respect to trading, for example, the less gravity that's involved, the further you can go with the same angle, with the same mass, and the same speed. Because there's not as much tying you down. It makes it easier. You all know that's true. When you are undergoing severe financial pressure, it's much more difficult to trade successfully because you're thinking about the big win. And you're not as much thinking about just doing it right. When you're free and clear to do this the right way without a lot of pressure, you can start small and it doesn't really make as much of a difference. What about drag? What opposing forces exist to block you? Do you have a relationship in your life that exists to block you? For example, if you have two teenagers that spend a lot of time together, like um, our kids Shana and Robbie spend a lot of time together, and they both like to go to the store and buy donuts, you know that there is a force in Robbie's life that's going to keep him from being able to give up donuts. <laughs> There's a drag on that. There's an opposing force. Someone who blocks Robbie from giving up donuts. Now, I'm not asking Robbie to give up donuts. I don't really care. But what if you were to approach the goal of trading, and you had a deliverable that was due by a certain date, and you had an opposing force who did not support you and that existed to block you? Well, that's going to affect how far you can go. That's the wind at your front. That's the wind that's moving toward you and the opposing force that blocks you. To the extent that you have a choice in the matter, it's important to remove drag to the extent that you can. Remember, you only control as much as you do control, and then the rest of it you have to deal with. And some opposing forces you cannot easily get rid of. But some other opposing forces require courage and necessitate that you give up on things. What about the supporting forces that exist to help you, like wind? Now, once again, if you are a projectile and you're being shot out of a cannon, and you've got a certain mass and a certain gravity and a certain speed and a certain angle, and you've got a certain drag or wind against you, you could also theoretically have wind at your back that assists you in flight. 
We've all had this kind of an experience where we feel supported in an endeavor by a team or by another individual who keeps us on track. And that wind at your back is incredibly important. And I would recommend that you marshal the forces of as many people as possible who support you in your endeavor and can exist to say nice things to you. For example, we could, on our personal watch list, set up a list of pivoteers across the top. And so we could have a grid where each pivoteer could actually comment on each other pivoteer's performance for the week in a supportive manner. And then you could, for instance, have a greater amount of wind at your back or a supporting force that exists to help you. So if you're down, you can answer questions to people and you can have a conversation right inside the watch list. It's a really low-tech way of doing that, but it is pretty interesting to see how much support you receive from the people around you. It's just an idea and it's just a way of illustrating the concept. Remember, I tend to become a larger version of the person that I already am. Over time, I'm already moving forward and I already have a certain mass. There's a certain gravitational pull beneath me. There's a certain wind at my back and a certain drag at my front. There's a speed and an angle associated with who I am. Let me give you some examples of what this is like. I tend to become a larger version of the person I already am with respect to, and then you finish the sentence. Money, debt, savings, stopping out, organization, chaotic lifestyle, a business-like focus. If you have a business-like focus and approach to the way that you trade, you're likely to, over time, become a larger version of a business-minded person with respect to trading. If you right now are headed in the direction of increasing your debt load and decreasing your savings rate as a person, over time you tend to become a larger version of that person you already are with respect to finances. If you are the type of person that lives an unhealthy life, you tend to become, over time, a larger version of the person you already are with respect to a healthy lifestyle. It's not that you can't change it, but it is important to remember that you are simply replicating and growing just like cells. Cells replicate by splitting off and becoming exact replicas of each other and then splitting off again and then splitting off again and again and again until there is a great army of like-minded cells that perform like-minded tasks and are originally imbued or come pre-wired for a certain set of things. Now, unlike science, you can't go in and redo your DNA unless you believe in the metaphysical possibility of doing such a thing. You can actually change your character traits. It's not easy, but each of us has a choice. Our character DNA replicates and grows and repeats over time. It's true for me and it's true for you. It's not unavoidable, however. Your physical DNA will replicate, grow, and repeat. And maybe there is some evidence that you can heal yourself or turn around your physical ailments with medication, therapy, or other types of things. But your character DNA is absolutely changeable. At any time, you can change your character and who you are and what you do. I'm not talking about multiple personality disorder, but I am talking about your character traits as they apply to trading, a healthy lifestyle, the way that you deal with your finances, the way that you deal with your relationships. At any point in time, you can choose who you are and what you want to get out of life. You can choose your trajectory. Remember that the trajectory that you're on right now carries with it a certain probability that given the consequences that you have tied to yourself or the lack thereof, you are headed in a certain direction over a certain period of time and if you fail to change that direction by speed, angle, wind, drag, velocity, you are unavoidably on the route to a certain destination. For instance, if you continue doing the same things that you're doing right now with respect to your health, 10 years from now, what will you be? Some people tell me, oh, I'm definitely going to be healthier. I'm definitely going to be healthier. I know that I'm going to change. I know that it's going to be awesome. I'm going to be the greatest. I'm going to be the most healthy person ever. 
But if you look at the trajectory that that person is on, from an objective standpoint, it's clear that that person is headed in an unhealthy direction. And just by wishing or just by wanting, no change is going to take place. Some people say, well, I'm sure that by the end of the year, I'm going to be able to do something with respect to my trading. I'm positive. I feel so good about it. But feeling good about it doesn't incorporate the wind, the drag, the velocity, the angle. And the probabilities are such that most people will fail to set a consequence with respect to their trading. And thus, most people will fail to actually make a change necessary in order to accomplish that type of a goal. Remember, there's a certain probability that you are on the way to a certain location. And it's a high probability that you're going to continue moving in the same direction that you are now. And that will end you up somewhere close to where we think you will be. If you tie a strict consequence to your behavior, you can actually alter the trajectory. You can marshal the forces necessary to support, to get the support you need. You can get rid of some of the drag or build a more aerodynamic person. You can reduce the gravity under your feet by distancing yourself from things that weigh you down. You can start off at an angle that is reasonable and gets you moving in the right direction. You can start at a speed that is going to be high so you can distance yourself quickly from the things that really drag you down. Remember, the further you get away from a mass and a gravitational pull, the sooner you're out of that gravitational pull and you are free to move farther and faster. And how heavy are you? How set in your ways have you become over time? Are you an endless tinkerer or are you ready to get down to business? By setting massive consequences to your actions or your inability to act, you will change your mass, you will alter your speed, you will adjust your angle, you will avoid things that drag you down in gravity and drag, and you will marshal forces to support you to help you in your endeavor because you know you cannot fail because the consequences are too great. Remember, you become a larger version of the person that you already are unless you make a change. And if you remain on the same trajectory for 10 years, where are you going to be in 2021? Not where are you setting a goal. Not where you hope to be. But given an objective, realistic view of where you are now and how hard you are working to accomplish a deliverable, where are you going to be in 2021? What deliverables are likely to be produced from the activities that you're engaging in, the speed at which you do them, the angle at which you are positioned, and all of the other factors with respect to character projectiles. You control the result. My last point is that the number one greatest supporting force in the world that exists to help you is having a deliverable that you truly believe in and that brings you true happiness and peace of mind. A deliverable that doesn't excite you and doesn't bring you peace of mind and true happiness is probably unlikely to become a reality. And if it does become if it does become a reality, it's unlikely to really be worth it in the end. You'll find that you've arrived at your destination as a projectile with most of your life past and not really satisfied with what you have produced. The greatest thing that you could do in the whole world at the very beginning is to decide where is it exactly that you want to go and why is it that you want to be there? What is it about the goal? the target that is in front of you that brings you true happiness and peace of mind. The trajectory itself needs to bring you true happiness and peace of mind. If the trajectory is not doing that, then the goal won't provide it either. There are millions of people that have made a lot of money doing things that they enjoy doing along with people that they enjoy spending time with and they get to a destination, they're happy with it, and they've also been able to make a living. That is an incredibly small percentage of the world's population. If you decide what it is that you want, and you decide that what you want 
brings you true happiness and peace of mind along the path. And then you remove the obstacles in your path, on your trajectory, to produce that deliverable. And you remove those obstacles by setting real consequences. You can deal with a world that's all probabilities. You can deal with a world that isn't maybe any better than a 50% chance that you're going to get to where you really wanted to go. But you're going to be able to deal with it in a much more realistic fashion. And the probabilities associated with getting to where you want to go are going to shoot through the roof. I've enjoyed spending four days with you talking about the trading game and the game of life. And this concludes the trading game presentation.